Hello, welcome back, Matt Osborne here, MrLiker.com. In this video, I'll try and answer a question I often get in terms of talking about the subject of flash photography using Leica cameras. What triggers might work for you? What flash units might work for you? And the lighting gear I use for my Leica portraits and wedding photography using Leica cameras. So let's jump straight in. As some of you may know, I use Leica M cameras and also the Leica CL digital cameras. So over the years, I've tried different flash units to try to understand what works best for me in different scenarios. And the brand I decided to go with was Godox. So these are Godox TT350 speedlights. They are kind of mini speedlights and they work really well on a small Leica M camera. One big takeaway from this video, if you're going to use Godox equipment on a Leica camera, you need to buy the Nikon Fit Godox equipment. So Godox don't make Leica Fit various flashes and triggers and things like that. So if you buy the ones which are Nikon Fit, it has the N as you see here. These definitely work with Leica M cameras and I say the Leica CL. Now on camera flash can work in kind of desperate times. So occasionally I'll use an on camera flash for wedding photography. When you're kind of running and gunning, you may need flash with you, kind of on you in low light situations when something's happening quickly. But ideally I try to shoot all my flash photography off camera. So if you want to use off camera flash, you have two choices. You can either have a flash on your hot shoe, which also triggers an off camera flash. So here are the two TT350 speed lights. I'll have one speed light on the camera, one speed light off camera. I can use this to give me some fill flash and also trigger the off camera flash. So that's one option, but it's not my preferred option because I don't like to have a flash on the top of the camera. The second option for off camera flash with a Leica camera is to use a Godox trigger. This is the X1T Nikon Fit, and this is one of the older aerial style triggers. These were my everyday triggers until I bought some of the newer Godox lights, which I'll show you in a second. These triggers don't work with the newer Godox lights, they'll only work with the older Godox lights. So I should probably tell you, this is called an FT16 Godox trigger, Nikon mount and it'll work with the older lights as mentioned. I think it's called the Godox Atom 180, the Godox Atom 360. If, if I'm saying this wrong, I'll write something on the screen. And then some of the older Godox speed lights, such as this full size. This is the 852, excuse the elastic band. But just to give you a size difference, this is a normal size speed light, which would normally take four AA batteries. And here is the TT, get it to fit, which takes two AA batteries. Now these actually do take two AA batteries, uh, as, as you can see here. So they're very easy to use. AA batteries are always really easy to find. The later more advanced flash units using lithium ion battery. So you no longer need four AA batteries. You now have a high capacity lithium ion battery. Um, so these types of lights and the older high power lights together with the old triggers were my setup for every wedding and most photo shoots. Then Godox released the TT350 and also the mighty Godox AD200. Here I've got it fitted with a different head. I'll put some Amazon links in the description below for the units I use or the ones that are still made if you're interested in buying some of these. These round heads are amazing if you use an AD200. So to recap, the FT16 trigger will not work with the AD200 and the TT350. That means I needed new triggers. One new trigger was the X1, but I'll show you if I just grab a camera that the X1 is not really suited to like M cameras. So here I have my like M240. And if I pop on the X1 trigger, like so, it's not too kind of obscenely big, but the problem you've got is, if you look on the top, you can no longer see your shutter speed. I guess one way around this is to use your shutter speed information on your LCD. But for someone that likes looking on the top of your camera like myself, I didn't really like this type of trigger because I couldn't see at a glance what settings I had on the camera if the camera was turned off, for example. Now there are pros and cons of every trigger and every system, as you probably know. One pro of the X1 trigger, or the first pro of the X1 trigger. It also gives you a PC sync port. So that means if you're using off camera flash and using a PC sync cable to fire, say an old fashioned flash, this trigger is better than say this trigger because this doesn't have a PC sync port. So that's benefit number one of the X1. And benefit number two, if for example, again, talking weddings, you want on camera flash 
and it doesn't even need to be a Godox flash, it can, it can then be any flash. So let's say you don't have a Godox TT350, you can just buy a cheap Chinese flash, something nice and small. You can fit your small third party flash to the top of the X1. Now this will give you fill flash and this will trigger your off camera flash. So I'll rig up say the, the reception room with the big lights in the corners and things. And then I'll have a trigger on the camera to fire off camera flashes, which are much higher power and they'll just last all day. Big lights tend to have a fast recycle time and you don't need to worry about the battery life. Even for a full day event, they just go on and on and on. Especially something like the AD200. These are just like a powerhouse when it comes to flash. So to recap, the second benefit of the X1 is you can use any flash. It doesn't need to be Godox on top of your trigger to give you on camera flash and this will fire off camera flash. But as you can see, it gets a bit unwieldy. In my mind, there's no point having a nice small Leica if you think I've got a massive flash on the top. I'll show you the size of a full size flash on top of a Leica M camera. So you can see that it's not really ideal to have a full size flash unit on top of a small Leica M camera. I'll just put that on there. So here is a full size flash it could be Godox, it could be anything on a reasonably compact like an M camera. So too big for my mind. Quickly remind you the difference in size. There's a Godox 350 TT. So this is what I use if I have to have on camera flash. So if you want to use the latest Godox flash unit, such as the AD200 or the TT350, you need the newer triggers which will fire those flash units. I say newer triggers, but time is moving so quickly in terms of electronics and modern gizmos. These are now reasonably old triggers. So again, the original one is called the FT16. That is not compatible with a new flash. They then released the XT16. This is compatible with the TT350 and the AD200 and also the older units such as the 852. So yesterday, for example, in the UK was a wet gray day and I had a photo shoot. So I packed lights to kind of emulate the sun and kind of fake it. I'll bring up a few examples to show in a second. So my kit yesterday was a M240 with trigger XT16 and like a CL with trigger XT16. Top tip, have at least two of these triggers if we're using multiple bodies, because if you're doing something like a wedding, you can't take a photo, decide to change bodies and then try and faff around and take your trigger off camera one and put it onto camera two. So I would always have two and if you're doing weddings, I'd say ideally have at least three. So you've got at least one backup unit. I think I've got four of the older triggers. So here are a few images shot yesterday. As I say, it was raining outside. So I had my flash unit in a clear plastic bag on a tripod outside this window. I then fired the flash through the window back at the model, firing the flash for the XT16, which I was using on the Leica CL and also a Nikon FM2 for my film photos. Now talking film photos, what about shooting flash on a Leica M film camera? Now this is where you may want to get one type of Leica M film camera model rather than another Leica film camera model. So when I first started out with my Leica photography, I got the Leica M3 and the Leica M2. Both of these cameras are amazing and they're still my favorites of all the Leica M cameras especially the Leica M3. But the problem with the Leica M2, the Leica M3, the Leica M4, they have what's called cold shoes. So this is not powered. That means if you put a trigger on the top of your M2, M3 or M4, take a photo, this is not gonna fire your off camera flash. So if you rely on flash for your photos, such as myself in the UK, I rely heavily on flash photography for weddings. So for that reason, I then bought the Leica M4P and the Leica M6. The Leica M4P, the Leica M5, the Leica M6, the Leica M7, and all the later models, they all have a hot shoe. So now I can use flash on my Leica M film camera during the weddings. So I tend not to do on-camera flash wedding photography, but this setup will work and there's no problem. So if I just demonstrate with the Leica M6, Godox XT16 trigger, Nikon fit. That's on the camera. If we advance the shutter, and then turn on the AD200, one, two, three. And there we have off camera flash with a Leica M film camera. And that is my setup that I use for wedding photography. I'll maybe put together a short video on what Leica cameras I use for weddings. Some of you may find that interesting. Now just for completeness, I won't cover it in this video because I don't want to make the video even longer. But you can use flash with vintage Leica cameras. That could be Leica 3 Barnett cameras, or it could be, as I say, the M2 or the M3. What you need to do is attach a cable from the port on the back to your flash unit and then you can take photos. 
If you're interested in learning about using Flash with the vintage Leicas, let me know in the comments and I'll try and put together a video at a later date. Before we wrap up, one thing I'd like to cover is if you enjoy using a EVF on your Leica M240 or Leica M10, the Vizio Flex on the Leica M10, such as the setup I've got here, the problem I now have is I cannot fire my off-camera flash. A Leica M240 does not have a PC sync port and so there's no other way to fire your flash except from your hot shoe. So if you find you rely heavily on your EVF on your M10, M240, you may find you might actually be better using a Leica SL, Leica SL2, or even the Leica CL that I have here. The advantage of these cameras is they have the built-in EVF, which then frees up the hot shoes. So you can then use your hot shoe for firing your off-camera flash or on-camera flash, depending on whatever your style is. Now I can teach a full six hour workshop just on flash photography. So this is a kind of super duper overview of some of the gear that I use and how I trigger my flash units from Leica cameras. If you want to see behind the scenes of me using some of these lights, you may want to check out my Patreon because I do share videos showing some of the light units I'm using and the kind of the setups that I've got. Perhaps when I do my next wedding, I'll try and do another Patreon video to again show the lighting setup that I've got for the reception and for the various parts of the day, which may then help you if you're looking to get into wedding photography. Okay, finally, did you notice any difference about this video? First, I realized that the blank wall behind me was even more dull and boring than I actually realized, so sorry for that. And so I flipped the camera around, so now I'm shooting into the room rather than at the wall, which would have been kind of here. So if you prefer this background, please hit the like button or let me know in the comments so I know to, to carry on trying to do some kind of messier backgrounds rather than just a clean wall, number one. And number two, do you think the audio in this video is better than in my usual videos? The reason I ask the question is because normally I use a Rode Video Micro, such as the one I have here. Whereas in today's video, I've upgraded to the Rode Wireless Go. These are now very affordable because the Wireless Go 2 has been released. So most people that were using the Wireless Go 1, I could call it, are now switching to the Wireless 2 Go. That means there's some amazing offers on Amazon. So I managed to pick up these new at a really great price. Again, I can link this in the description below if you're looking to improve your audio for your own videos. I'm definitely not saying I'm an expert in audio because I'm definitely not, but these types of wireless microphones are much better than one that's attached to your camera because it means now I'm not tied to my camera where I have to stay at this distance from the camera, for example. Because I have it attached to my clothing, I can now run off to the other end of the room, make a cup of coffee, <laughs> come back, and you'll hear all the finer details. Maybe I'll do that for a laugh to test the audio. So that was update number two and update number three, just to finish. I have bought some more video equipment, which is coming soon. So hopefully you'll start to see a few more subtle improvements to the video quality of this channel. I mean, to be fair, I set the bar as low as I possibly can by having these dull and boring backgrounds for the last 160 odd videos. So hopefully it can only get better. As this channel has nearly reached 10,000 subscribers at the time of making this video, I thought it was time to kind of try and up my game and give you guys hopefully a more watchable video experience rather than just lots of information. So I can't promise it'd be perfect, but I will do my best to make it a bit more enjoyable. And with that said, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and feel free to subscribe to see the slow, gradual improvements in the video quality from this channel. As always, a big thank you to my patrons and you guys will be the first to hear about the new camera equipment, which is coming soon. Thanks for watching and see you again soon. Bye.